we got our man Teddy Cakestad. He was working through some kinks on uh, Skype there. They got to figure it out, and let's just jump into it. Teddy Cakestad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. I hope you can hear me. I can kind of hear you. Okay, yeah, you do sound a little bit soft, but I believe we can hear you. Hopefully, your produ- uh, the producer can let me know if we're good to go on the air. Um, but I appreciate you coming on, man, as we kick it off on a pretty important week with the CPI out tomorrow. We have the dollar index chopping around a bit. We got the 10 years sitting right at about 4%. So, yeah, tell me what you're thinking about this week, Teddy. Uh, I'm looking forward to the number tomorrow. I think it's going to be kind of sideways going into that. I mean, you can see how the trade was very lackluster the past couple of sessions. You know, and it, I was I kind of put that out in the Tiger Forex report too. Is that we were hitting some key, uh, key swing lows and highs yesterday and last week in the marketplace, and interest rates and oil also they're kind of going sideways right now. I, I even put it in. I think I my comment I made, the way I put it was yeah, it's going to be a buzzsaw between seventy dollars and seventy five in the oil market. And I think it's going to remain so between that little range, you know, and I think until we get the numbers out tomorrow, uh, I think that's going to be a big deal because CPI is a big interest rate number. The Fed's going to be watching that. So, you know, with the meeting that's coming up, you know, in the not too distant future, that is a number that if it comes out radically in the wrong direction or starts to track in the wrong direction, that's something, you know, is going to be on the table in the discussion, you know. So um, <clears throat> if it's tracking in the right direction, well, then, you know, that starts to put things more towards a dovish to uh halting you know situation with them so i'd be aware of that you know especially i would watch for the 10 year and the 30 year to uh you know probably move off of that number tomorrow if they don't you know and it stays sideways well then i would expect to see a lot of uh, sideways action in the currencies too so i'd be careful with that when it comes to volatility over the next couple of sessions nice um yeah that crude um you know, you've been calling it well, man. It is interesting. Just kind of you wake up each day, 70 to 72 to 73, getting a little volatility, dollar, two dollar moves in either direction, but kind of just chopping around for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have two four. currencies that are, you might want to know about for some action for a trade, though. One is the yen and one is the pound. If you want to talk about one of those. I would love it, man. Uh, let's kick it off with the yen. I was going to ask you about the yen. I always okay. love talking about the yen with you. What are you looking at for the yen right now? OK, so I just had to pull up the chart. OK, so in the sure. report. Uh, we had a nice little rally going on with the yen. They had a nice spike high last week. I really like where it's trading at right now because as it is, <clears throat> if you look at where the from the last big swing high down into last week's swing high, if you take that downward sloping channel line, we're coming right up on that this, this morning. If we take out last week's swing high, that's a pretty bullish sign that we're going to start to really try and make it up towards that 150 level. You know, now that kind of I, the only way I see that not happening is if you see a big rally in interest rates like the 10 year and the, and, the, and the 30 year. But I was looking at the 10 year and the 30 year and also the two and the five. And I still think you got a good like two to three handles where you could still press or support in the 10 year. And if that happens, you're looking at about four to five in the bonds, which puts that around 116 ish area, something like that so that's another a four dollar move and that would also help boost the dollar and also the u.s dollar yen which could help get the yen up to about that 150 mark so <clears throat> i would watch interest rates if interest rates stay flat then it's going to be probably be a little tough and this upside move right might run out of steam i wouldn't say that the bear trend is going to continue but it may start to get choppy you know so i would watch yields in that regards you know and especially nice. if there's an uptick in oil if you see oil get back above 75 and yields just stay relatively where they're at or if they tick a little higher then i think you'll see a little rally there nice what was the second currency you had mentioned uh, that would be the British pound, and this goes Perfect. Into- I tell you, can you, can you hang out for a second? We'll tease it, all right? Can you hang with us for the break? Perfect. We're going to talk some Absolutely. pound, folks, when we get back. Uh, stay tuned. we got one more segment with our man Teddy Kegstad. Don't go away, folks. Welcome back, folks. we got the S&Ps up by about six points right now. You trade to a high of 48.07, and you see the action, a little bit of selling in the last few minutes. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, remember, you can head on over to the front page of TFNN, check out the newsletters tab, check out Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report. He's got new issues every week on Monday, updates throughout the week. And if you have some time and you want to check out some of the webinars he's got as well, a couple of great webinars under the services tab as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, British pound right now. What are we looking at, Teddy? 
pound last week we hit we set a nice critical swing low okay now we're hovering that low it was just above our daily directional pivot level which is at 120 was a dollar 25.94 so basically a dollar 26 even okay. <clears throat> if we take out that low okay that would set us up for a very nice correction that could get us down to probably that 124.30 to even 123.30. So you're looking at a good four dollar move, um, potentially. You know, um, and nice. I think that would be a very nice sell off objective, especially if the dollar starts to have a little recoil. We'll see what that number is. Um, now the key thing is I would use the range from Friday. So if we take out Friday's low it's bearish. If we take out the high, then it's a good chance that we can make new swing highs and take out that high from about a couple, was it to a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, back around Christmas time. And that would, now to the upside, I don't think we have a big um, potential there. I think you could take out that high and maybe get up to 128.5, maybe push 129 even. So you're looking at maybe two points of upside potential there. That's stretching it, you know. Um, I think that you could see a nice sell-off that would be very healthy for the um, relationship and that currency and then give us a nice boundary <clears throat> where we can di start to digest numbers as we head into the first quarter and then set a trend. And another thing is, People may need to get ready for some big sideways. We may be buffering up against the upper and lower boundaries of certain ranges in the currencies. So, you know, currencies, I love them because they trend most of the time, but we're coming into that period where we could be into some range trading. So those long-term trends in a lot of these currencies that we've seen, especially in like the yen, and the yen's the only one because the BOJ could be doing stuff for the first time in a long time. But otherwise, okay. as a whole, I think we got to run, Teddy. Range. That was okay. great info, man. I appreciate the the actionable info on those two trades. We'll talk to you next week, folks. Have a great Take day. Care. Basil's up.